Welcome back to another single malt review. This time we're going to take another look at a Glendronach, but we're going to go up in the stakes just a wee bit from our last one. This one is an 18-year-old, uh, but Dave has a particular connection to this one, so I'll let him explain. That's right. What we have here is the case for Glendronach's 20-year-old Tawny Port finish. In my wholly subjective opinion, the finest whiskey of all time. I've never enjoyed a spiritus liquor such as I've enjoyed this one. Two decades old, finished in a tawny port cask, beautiful delicious flavours, a fortified wine of fruits, of dark chocolate and spices. Truly the finest whiskey of all time. But less, it is gone, consumed and enjoyed, very much enjoyed. Mm, and no longer available new in the stores. So, farewell, sweet prince. May we look upon your like again in the future. And what they just have, though? couldn't wait to make the next one. So, the younger cousin, 18-year-old Tawny Port finish. Next best thing, perhaps, or maybe even better? We'll hope we'll to best. see. I've spoken in the past of my unabashed love for Glendronic, my favourite whiskey, my favourite distillery. So, this review will be tainted, it'll be subjective, it'll be loaded with my biased fanboy opinions. But, show me a man who claims to be an objective critic of food or beverages, and I shall show you a flagrant charlatan. Mm. A charlatan, I say, for well, taste being subjective I'll just as it have is. to do my best. Although, that said, there's um, more people than most would say um, Glendronic is the, um, the highland of highlands. Um, in many people's books. I'm not sure if it would be in mine. I'm just far too picky. But uh, let's see what we've got. Immediately struck by a very dark colour. And you can take that to shade. heart because Glendronic does not colour their whiskey and nor do they chill filter. So yeah. you can actually look at that colour and say yes, which is important. And as you say, it is a... Um, that is... When you're dealing with a sherry whiskey, that's the colour of promise right there. Yes. Big influence from that tawny port. I'm reminded of the ruby port matured Kilhoman we have tried previously, except in this case it's much less a coppery hue and more dark woody tones. That's a very vibrant dark orange verging on brown. Mm. No, it's a, it's, a, it's a brown gold. It's very dark. Which is how Sherry's going to end up, assuming it's not a sort of an old, sort of a second or third fill. Older Sherry's, uh, even some younger Sherry's, are going to get pretty dark pretty quick. And this one, certainly, certainly looking pretty dark. Now I'm just enjoying a vibrant bouquet of aromas oh, there. Yeah. It is fruity, it's spicy, it's like a is both a sherry and a port element coming through. No, that's ah. uh, that's expressive to say. And a bit of and fennel. Wow. No, this the, bodes very well. The spice, particularly on the nose, is remarkably... The spice must flow, and it is flowing from this glass <laughs> into <laughs> rem my Remarkably nose. defined. I, there is even... Um, there's an ease, as you say, but uh, licorice as well, which is unusual to find. Mm in a whiskey, a significant, significant hit of licorice, and um, sort of sweet cinnamon and lashings, lashings of golden syrup as well. It's a distinctly mm. sweet note. Uh, onto the flavour. Mm. Mm. That is a warm peppery spice to start with. Giving in some big, almost dry port characters. Adding a little water to see what eventuates. Mm. Mm. Very it starts. Warming. It starts exceptionally sweet, and with this drink, at any rate, it it gets drier as it goes on. It just quietly, the syrup just starts to seep away, and quite remarkable dried fruit. And some sort of pungent spices, maybe a tiny bit of clove, and that sort of thing comes around. I'll need to take a couple more sips, but it's it's a diverse palette on that yeah, one. Some lovely poached fruit, 
think a big pot full of poached quince with spices, with sweetening, with some lemons maybe. Mm. A mixture of the tart, cooked fruit with a sweet, spicy bed lifting it up. No, there's there's a lot in here. It's gonna it's, it's more than one um, more than one sip can really quantify. Let's see. Mm. I've added some water. There is now some vanilla coming through. No, I'm, I'm, going to put a, I'm going to put a bit of water in there as well. 46%, mm. so quite strong. Not obscenely strong, but um, it's mm. certainly certainly one that will take a bit of water and change in the it's process. It's still clinging to that glass. There are some fine oils in there, just a light sheen lurking on the inside of the glass there. No, there's a lot in there, a lot in here on the palate, and I rather, I rather like it actually. And that flavour has changed somewhat. The water is amplifying the port characters. It's bringing out a delicious after-dinner tawny port, but still some hints of sherry as well. It's sort of like a Pedro Jimenez with that tart, currenty, but still sweet, still almost syrupy liqueur-like mouth feel. Mm. No, the water, once again, it freshens it up, and it's made the fruit more apparent and fresher. Some of the dried fruit and some of the syrup has taken a bit of a back seat, and... There are some savoury characters mm. coming through underneath that. There's some drier, some beeswax, some leather, a little bit of a cigar box, aroma or flavour. If you imagine, the, if you could taste the smell of a box of cigars, that's not a very useful description, but... That's what it tastes like, simply. Mm. A bit of a bit of sweet pipe tobacco mm. sort of a thing. But yes, that's a far more appetizing. Really, it's really very good. Yes. Um, I'm trying to compare this to another expression I've tried. The closest I have had was the. It was either twenty or twenty-one year old Glendronic Parliament, and that had a combination of sherry and. Pedro Jimenez matured whiskey in it, and it was quite different. Um, it was much darker. This is dark as it may be, as far as Glendronic goes. This is still in a slightly lighter style than usual, and the fruitiness is more upfront mm. than I have come to expect, and certainly more so with water. There is. A little bit of creamy milk chocolate creeping through, some drier, spicier dark chocolate. I'm not getting any licorice on the tongue. Mm, no, there should um, be some there, but I'm not, not feeling the, it. The licorice, I think, was confined to the nose, and with water, it has receded significantly. To me, um, chocolate is a good call. If you've ever had chocolate with um, orange zest in it, you can get dark chocolate with... Um, pieces of crystallized orange zest that is not too far away from the from the palette here it's actually pretty complex which makes it difficult to really assess so quickly but on the whole on the whole I'd say I do I do rather enjoy that it's just it's a whiskey that is demanding a bit of mental engagement to get the most out of it because the palette is so very long and it's quite diverse. It doesn't end the way it begins. So um, this is a whiskey to take your time over if you're enjoying it. Don't have it too quickly. Um, probably not one for a you know a home from work whiskey or something like that. When you have a more of a quiet moment, this is more of a, a whiskey for that. Where the 20 year old offered big handfuls of succulent juicy sultanas, this one is a bit lighter on that. The other flavors are coming through more strongly. There's more fruit, more spice, and perhaps a little less of that tawny port. Hmm. No, I think there was there was more port in the other one. I'm not sure what the finishing times were necessarily mm. for the two whiskies, but um, it probably will have it will have had long enough that's for sure because i can always suspicious of finishes as i am i can always tell if it hasn't had long enough because you get this sort of um this shoddy overcoat 
this veneer of flavour, which I can always I can always see it coming. And this one doesn't have it. This one is integrated, although not perhaps as integrated as the older, twenty year old was. But it's really difficult to say that objectively. I think this is probably as far as tawny finishes go, and as far as the port finishes from Glendronics go, it's without going slightly crazy on one of their vintage ones, which I do recommend if you're in the habit of going slightly crazy on whiskies, or in the rare instance that they release a slightly younger one, sort of under 15 years, uh, that is 100% port matured. That's probably the only way to get a more of a a more of a port matured whiskey quality, and that's that's by no means a guarantee. It should also be said that, as you saw, we have only just opened this whiskey. Whiskies, especially older whiskies like this, um, they can be a little closed when they've been in the bottle, all corked up with no room to breathe. And you may find that once you take off the lid, the first dram you have, it might not be as good as the second. It may need a day or two to just um, figure out what year it's woken up in and before it really hits its stride. So it, it may well that be that this is this is tasting even better a day or two from now. We'll just have to find out on our own time. But as it is, I think it's easily a 7.5. Whether it's an 8, I'm not certain. As I said, I would just I would need longer with it because it's quite a complex whiskey. I will stick with a 7.5 for now. Um, which is a very good score for a very good whiskey, but um, I have just an inkling that Dave might give it a bit higher than me, mm. because he is very much in the bag when it comes to Glendronics. Indeed. Well, I must say, the 20-year-old Tawny Port remains my gold standard perfect 10 whiskey. It is the benchmark in my mind. I will say, when we talked about the Sauternes finished Glendronic on our previous episode... I mentioned that it was possibly too sweet. They had too many liqueur characters. There's too much sugar, too much caramel, too much lightness on the tongue, perhaps. If you like your whiskey heavier, especially if you like it peatier, it would not be whiskey for you. But this time, we have a much more robust, a bigger, heavier hitting flavor, much more savory while still being very sweet. Just a bigger flavor in every respect, reaching out feelers into all those flavor categories. I have to say, it's not replacing the 20-year-old as my favourite whiskey of all time. It is a worthy successor. It's very, very good. It's not the best ever, but I will give this a solid 8.5 out of 10. Mm. A remarkable drop. And this is the first time I've ever tried it. As you saw, we opened the bottle live on camera here. These are my first impressions, but they're very good impressions indeed. Well, strong scores as you would tend to demand from Glendronic, which is a pretty strong distillery. But either way, this has been the Single Malt Review. Thank you for watching, and we will be back very shortly with another dram of interest. See you then. Sláinte.